thought I should make another channel that kind of, um, you know, is a little bit less quick and uh, just talks a bit more about stuff without uh, worrying about trying to lose people. So yeah, I'm going to take this off the controller keyboard and we'll have a look inside. So like I mentioned in the other video, this is basically like a, it's a glorified MIDI controller that has been sort of custom built with uh, the, the kind of interface in mind of yeah, the FM synth inside the Sega Mass Mega Drive. Um, like, uh, you could assign all of these to um, a another uh, keyboard thing, like one of those, what is it, like a Behringer, like one with all of the knobs, a knob bank. But uh, it's just like, there's a few annoying quirks about this that I had to adjust, like for instance, f to change the algorithms, I had to uh, make sure it wouldn't go back to CC0. It would only send one CC command, but we'll have a look at it in sec. So I'm just taking it apart. So basically what is happening is there's a MIDI cable coming out of this box and going into the Sega Mega Drive, which has been which has got this Gen MDM in it. So if you're if in, so if you're interested in building this, the code is on the website. It is basically the notes and volts MIDI controller code. You should check out his YouTube channel as well. Um, but it's got a few uh, changes to it. For instance, it doesn't go back to CC0 when I adjust and push on the preset buttons and stuff like that. It, um, uh, you could change the um, MIDI channel. Like I said on the other channel, I still haven't figured out how to give it a poly mode, which basically means that the only thing that it does is just kind of replicate all of the CC commands onto all of the channels. I, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it without messing with anything else. It's just, it's a bit annoying. So if you want to have a look and want to solve that and have a way, have a look at a way of turning it into, uh, you know, the last um, switch on this rotary switch, which is this light, which is digital pin 12. If you want to make that do um, Omni mode, that'll be uh, much appreciated. Right, let's have a turn around and let's have a look at the back. So on the back, you'll see this strip board and this strip board has basically got an Arduino. This Arduino is actually got uh, UHA's code that is from the time where I built it into the Game Boy Mega Machine, which actually splits the, uh, the polyphonic signals off to separate channels. So this basically means that it makes it polyphonic from MIDI channel one to five of the different voices, the same working the same as the Mega, uh, the the whatever it is the mega machine i keep on forgetting what it is but this is currently disconnected because it is no use for it yet until i'm able to make all of the cc commands talk to all five channels there's no point um why five channels because gen mdm uh turns the sixth channel on the ym2612 into a sort of noise slash wave channel and it's different to the other five so there's no point in making it six voice polyphony because one voice will sound ugly as fudge compared to the rest of them so i decided to not bother um this is the controller uh arduino uh, you'll notice these are legit arduinos as well so um what this is doing is this is the one with the notes and volts code on it connected to this uh via pins a0 a1 and a2 and digital pin six uh one, two, three, four multiplexers. These are just simple 16 channel multiplexers. I cannot remember the code, but it is the same as the uh, through hole version, except this is not through hole. It's just a weird extra PCB board. And I can't remember the bloody code. I can't read it. Oh, it's a 4067 multiplexer. Yeah. And there's, there's a, this multiplexer right here is multiplexing the eight, uh, the 16 buttons that is these buttons down here and this is basically four presets and four writes for these presets <laughs> these send different cc commands onto a certain uh, channel a command channel they send different values to send it into it and then this one is another eight switches that's basically the rotary switch for the algorithm adjust and that go these go off to these which connects to this multiplexer and then goes off to here uh, to how to learn how to connect the multiplexers to here there's a there's a video on knots and volts his uh channel telling you how to do that so it's pretty straightforward if you want to do that there's another one here which is doing uh the this uh, bank of uh, potentiometers and this stuff right here and then there's another one and another one and they're all connected together if you look at the code and you're, if you're even a slight bit 
uh, tech heady, you can figure out which of these connect to which pins which connect to the Mega Drive. Uh, you need to read the, um, if you go to the Catskill Electronics website, uh, you'll see there's a little scale manual which tells you all of the parameters and all of the CC command numbers that they address to, and then you can figure it out. But on the Arduino code, uh, after you've watched the Notes and Volts videos, I've actually labeled all of the Arduino code so you'll know which pins of the multiplexer to connect to which ones if you want to do that, if you get my gist. Yeah, I've, I've wired all the pots backwards. I am such a plonker. Well, I best get used to it because I don't think I can be bothered to turn them all around. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to live backwards when I play this one. Yeah, I have literally soldered all of them bloody backwards. I don't believe it. So what what's uh, going on? How is the CV working? So this wire is five volts and it's going into the jack jack switch and when there's no jack in it it sends five volts to the potentiometer right here but when you plug a jack in the cv replaces the five volts from the jack and goes into the potentiometer meaning the potentiometer actually becomes an attenuator for the cv instead of an attenuator for the five volts like usually you would do for an arduino piece of code uh, there's no voltage um kind of protection you just got to be a bit, a little bit careful what you plug it into because imagine trying to make voltage protection for um, 48 potentiometers. That would be an absolute pain. And that's exactly the same for every single one. So, ground, you literally solder 5 volt, 5 volt, 5 volt, 5 volt to the uh, jack switch and then you then you solder a wire going over to there, blah, 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 blah. And then all of that and then you uh, make a really messy wire over to there. So that's how that is doing that. These LEDs are literally wired via a 1K resistor in parallel to uh, the um, MIDI uh, channel changer, which is literally just five cables going to D digital pins seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 on the Arduino Nano. And then the LEDs are connected in parallel to those using these snazzy little snazzy numbers. These are called um, Molex connectors and they're the best connectors you can get. You can get cheap copies from Rapid Electronics. I like them. Yeah, I'd suggest this is a good way to do it. And then you just uh, get a tool that kind of tightens up the crimps, which are these things. And then the tool is in there somewhere. It's blue. I can't find it. So there's that. Another thing I found with this project was if you've got the Arduino, the MIDI output uh, from the Arduino, you can wire in parallel if you've only, you know if you're only plugging it into one thing you can wire in parallel an led from the five volts which is the positive leg to the to the um signal wire which is via a 1k resistor yet again so you've got that and you can plug that in and that gives you a little bit of a signal of what is going on from the front panel or you could just look at the actual signal coming from the tx led on the arduino nano unless you've got a legit arduino for some reason the tx LEDs don't do it on that, but the cheap knockoff ones, like, uh, what's a cheap knockoff one? I don't know. Uh, do that, it's pretty snazzy. That's one of the bonuses of having the cheap knockoff ones. Uh, a quick chat about uh, the panel. Uh, this is just a meter by 40 centimeters. And as you can see, I just uh, drawn it with a uh, Sharpie. It's pretty scratched up now because it's taken a while to build so, and I've just kept on lifting it up and putting it down and it's inevitably got scratched. The uh, the case is literally from some some wood that I had lying around from spares. It's from Home Base, which is a UK DIY apartment store. I stained it a bit, it looks pretty snazzy. But that is just a little quick look at what the fudge is going on here. And like I said, the Arduino code is available on my page and I'm about to run out of batteries on my camera. So go and check it out there and go and check out the Notes and Volts website. And if you think you could solve my polyph polyphony problem, then please, please have a look. Anyway, peace. See you in a bit.